All right, everybody, welcome to the summer board meeting of the Georgia Forestry Association. It's my pleasure to call the meeting to order. It looks like everybody survived the heat and the golf, so I'm glad you made it today. Uh, it's my pleasure to uh, ask Todd Mullis to lead the invocation, please. If you will, please uh, bow your head. Lord, we come before you today uh, humbled by your love and your grace. And we thank you so much for the undeserving mercy that you show us uh, every day. As we, uh, as we come here and begin these proceedings, we just ask that they are all pleasing to you, that they represent you well, and we continue to ask for your counsel and guidance upon managing and using this wonderful bounty of resources that you have entrusted us to. We continue to ask that you allow us to do it wisely, wisely and represent you well. There are many unspoken prayers that were needed here. We ask that you lift those up. We ask that you be with our family and friends. We ask that you be with those traveling. Give us all safety in all that we do. And may we continue to honor you in all that we do. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Todd. Appreciate that. I wish y'all could see this. I've got all this red because I forgot the minutes last time. And I've got a pen. We're not going to we're not going to do that. I need a, an approval of the uh, agenda. You should have all gotten one of those distributed to you prior to the meeting. Can I get a motion to second? Got a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? All right. Andres is going to read to us the antitrust statement. Or Sir, as we normally do at these meetings, it's a, we're, we're all in the same industry together. Some of us are competitors, some are, are clients. Uh, but it's very important, of absolute critical importance, that we uh, abide by all the antitrust rules and regulations that our government has set for us. Uh, this includes discussing the fixing or regulating of, pro of prices, discussing trading areas, limiting or restricting the quantity of, of products to be sold, or discriminating against or excluding competitors. All of those should not be discussed. If at any point in time our discussions do go in that direction or someone asks a question, uh, sometimes innocently, but, uh, but, but takes us in that direction, please uh, uh, let us know uh, and we'll cease discussion. Uh, make a note of it in the minutes and, uh, and continue on in a different direction. Thank you. Thank you, Andres. Okay, the minutes. You should have gotten a copy of the minutes by email. Everybody get one of those. I need a motion to approve those minutes. Second? Any additions, corrections? If none, I'll have a, a vote, please. P approval? All right, thank you, sir. All right, Tom, will you uh, provide us the financial information? Good afternoon. I'm pleased to report once again that your association continues to operate on a healthy financial footing with a stable membership base. The association's operating funds as of June 30, 2017 were 349,467,000. And our reserve funds as of June 30, 2017 were 397,861 dollars. <throat> a few quick comments on our 2017 June year-to-date fiscal status. As of June 30, 2017, total income of $879,799, exceeded total expenses of $532,498. This compares to 2016 June year-to-date income of $788,715 and expenses of $442,517. With respect to year-to-date income, a big thank you to all of you for your dues. There are no categories of concern. However, please note that we expect to meet the budget target for dues. The transfer from the foundation for management will be considerably larger than in years past. 
and income from the annual conference is on track to exceed expectations. With respect to year-to-date expenses, there are no categories of concern as well. As always, uh, please contact me with questions or comments. Thank you. Tom does a great job with that. We really appreciate it. We need a motion to approve those. I need a motion and a second to approve the uh, financial report. All right, all in favor? Opposed? Thank you very much. I think we have Dale Green's going to come up and give us a report the status of the Warnell School of Forestry. Good afternoon. <clears throat> uh, things are going well at the school. I uh, just want to give you an uh, update on just a few quick things. We have uh, two faculty searches that we just launched this summer. One is to replace uh, Dr. Robert Teske uh, in forest ecophysiology. Uh, Robert's had a very successful career with us. He's currently a university distinguished research professor. He's going to retire at the end of December, um, and we're going to replace him with another uh, higher in forest ecophysiology. And Dr. Dahlia Abbas left us after spring semester. Uh, she was in a joint position with the Savannah River Ecology Lab focused on natural resource sustainability and certification. We are searching for a, a similar position there as well. Both of those would start uh, next August at the beginning of fall 2018. Um, I thank many of you for hiring our students. Uh, we, we once again saw very strong placement for interns and for uh, permanent hires. And we have a, a large undergraduate class coming in this fall. And again, I would, would urge you to come early um, to have the best pick. And um, Caitlin Kivett, who handles placement for us, will be here at the meeting at the booth. So please stop by and see her. Um, our undergraduate enrollment, as I mentioned, is up a little bit with this fall class, but we did have a little dip last fall. So we kind of, uh, that caught our eye and we have, uh, redoubled our recruiting efforts. I think we're seeing that pay off and we have some new recruiting videos that will be available soon and and those will be available on our website. You can download them, share them with young people that might be interested in in what we do and it's it's if you think they're corny too bad they're supposed to work for 18 to, to 24 year olds so um, that's that's what I've been told in so many words by some of our staff. We have revised our water and soil resources major. We were not consistently graduating 10 graduates a year there, and that's a minimum for the Board of Regents. So that major has been renamed, uh, and it's now called Natural Resource Management and Sustainability. And it has two, two options under it now. One is the old water and soil resources major. A second one is a geospatial information science major. Um, we can, they don't count how many you got in, in an option, but put them all together, it's got to be bigger than 10. So we're, we're considering a couple others that we may put under there. We purposely named that very broadly so we can put small but important uh, emphasis areas under there and serve a greater range of natural resource needs. And we intentionally put sustainability in there because there's a big push on campus uh, in that area and we thought if any school on, on campus deserved to own that term, it's the one that's been doing it for 111 years. Um, I've, I've had some conversation with folks about that. You can kind of tell that's something that we feel strongly about. <laughs> um, and uh, we have a natural resources, recreation and tourism uh, major. Uh, their numbers there have, have not been what we'd hoped they would be when we added that about 10 years ago. So that faculty is looking at ways to update and tweak that. And it may actually, I think they're also considering a name change. So that's something that I hope to have uh, to report to you next year. The, the most important thing you need to know about these major revisions is that we have no plans to do anything to our very successful forestry and fisheries and wildlife majors. So just put your mind at ease on that. Uh, they ain't broke and we're not going to fix them. Um, graduate enrollment is up about 4% uh, from 187 to 194. This is something we expected with all the hires we made a couple of years ago. Those new faculty are getting their programs off and going. We're seeing that. And our extramural research funding uh, this last fiscal year increased from 8.2 to 11.4 million dollars. So again, I think being fully staffed is, is helping us there. We also had a strong year with private uh, funding. 
We had $3.7 million last year in pledges and gifts, and a lot of credit for that is due to Bridget Harden's hard work. She's here as well. We have um, fully funded, have commitments to fully fund the Stuckey Professorship in Forest Econ and Taxation, and I want to thank the Stuckey, uh, uh, Stuckey Timberlands and also Robert Pollard for helping make that happen, and uh, Cato Lumber. Enterprises uh, has made a major gift to the school, so what we've long called the Dean's Conference Room uh, come September will be known as the Cato Lumber Conference Room. Um, looks really good. They, they rescued one of their big logos before Inter 4, threw them all in the trash, and it's, I'm just picking at y'all, and, uh, and it's, it's hanging up in the conference room and looks really good. So we've also added five graduate fellowships that help us uh, recruit top grad students to our program. And, and I want to thank again the Rhodes family uh, and the Cooper family uh, for those. So a couple of dates just to make you aware of. One is uh, our Center for Forest Business Golf Tournament. Uh, and, and there's some flyers in the room. That's scheduled for Friday, September 15th. Warehouser's the lead sponsor, but we're looking for some others as well. Uh, and we thank many of y'all here who've helped with that in the past. Uh, that's a real difference maker for that uh, unique forest business program. Also, homecoming is October 14th, and we're playing Mizzou. Uh, I know we don't have the most uh, eye-catching home schedule this year. I can tell that because the Athletic Association was still trying to sell single-game tickets with emails last week, but uh, we'd love to have you all in town. And really, I just want to thank all of you all for all you do to support our school. We've got a great program, and you all are a big part of making that happen. One other thing I want to mention before I hand it off to Buford, uh, some of y'all know, but maybe some of you don't, that uh, Robert Ferris uh, retired from the Forestry Commission at the end of May, and uh, the GFC board asked me to lead the search to, uh, to find a replacement, and uh, we, we met this morning, the search committee did. We had uh, a very strong pool and with a lot of diversity in it, uh, a lot of different diverse experiences, uh, we had 11 people. Uh, we've identified four. I'm in the process of contacting those folks to schedule interviews that will take place August 8th and 9th and 14th and 15th in Macon. Uh, and there will be an announcement of that uh, early next week as soon as I've got confirmation from, from all of those that they are indeed still interested in going to the next level and that we, we run that by the, the GFC board. So uh, stay tuned. Early next week we'll have the details on that and uh, Buford will have a little more to say about that next. Thank you. Dale go, does a great job, University of Georgia, and we appreciate that. Uh, Buford Sanders is going to give us an update on the State Forestry Commission. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, I'm Buford Sanders, Georgia Forestry. Um, um, Frank Sorrells is acting as our interim director at this point. Uh, he was unable to be here and since his regrets, he asked me if I'd step in and I, of course, was glad to do so. Um, it's been four months since the Forestry Commission has reported to the board uh, and what a four months it has been. Um, in February, we were already experiencing tremendous fire activity in the state and if you recall, we were up in North Georgia in the very far reaches of the northwest part of the state in inaccessible areas with hand crews, moved a lot of our resources up into that part of the state. At the same time, we've had a number of tornadoes that have come across the state throughout this spring. Um, and likewise, many of you know that we've had a, a really significant Ips beetle outbreak across the central part of the state. So no shortage of work there. And in every instance, the Forestry Commission has been actively on the site. We've deployed uh, chainsaw strike teams uh, when we could uh, do initial uh, resource response. And we've also followed up our sustainable community forestry program, comes into these communities and works to try to help these uh, communities recover um, and do damage assessments and things like that. Our fiscal year ended on 630. And when we closed the books on this last fiscal year, we saw over 6,127 wildfires that were reported. And of those, over 72,000 acres were on private lands. You know, somewhere around April the 6th, the lightning strike landed in the Okefenokee National Wildlife Refuge. And many of you know what that did to our agency. And for the next two months, we spent a tremendous amount of energy and resource 
That fire became known as the West Mims Fire. And over the course of its run, it did 152,000 acres of burning. But over 30, almost 32,000 acres of that was on private land as well. And we estimate that that was somewhere around a $38 million impact to timber, just that one fire alone. Um, again, Ips beetles, uh, in 24 years of working in the central part of the state, I've never seen anything like it. Dale, I don't think anybody has really seen anything quite like this. There's over 5,000 individual spots that were identified that were under five acres. There were over 300 spots that were identified greater than five acres, and some as much as 120 acres of contiguous wood impacted by an Ips beetle, something we've just never seen, just unprecedented. Maybe on a lighter note, on the appropriation side, uh, we were able to acquire another $10 million through the amended budget. We have obligated and we have spent that money. We've acquired another 45 crawler tractors, which were much needed, uh, three truck transports and a low boy, as well as putting some uh, two-way communications capabilities into those units so that they're now fire ready. We're now in a new fiscal year. Uh, our FY18 budget is relatively unchanged from the 17 budget with one major exception. Uh, for the first time in nine years, we were awarded a 2% pay increase that's essentially across the board for eligible employees. Um, and that certainly is much appreciated. Certainly thank the governor's office, we thank the legislature, and certainly thank this association for the support you've made in that effort. Uh, the Forestry Commission was very fortunate to receive a One Georgia grant for $3 million. We, we decided we'd buy some seats with it. Uh, seats, I, I said seats but seats are single engine air tankers, okay? And the best way it's been described to me is these are like crop dusters, except we're not using the booms and nozzles. They have a, a dump tank on them, essentially. Uh, we purchased or ordered two of those. They'll be due in this fall, and uh, hopefully they'll be ready for deployment by the spring. I'm told our pilots are gonna be able to fly these with minimal training. Um, <laughs> I, that first headlong run into a wildfire with 600 pounds of retarded in a, in a crop duster has got to be an amazing ride. Um, uh, so anyway, uh, we are actively selling seedlings right now. Um, please encourage anyone that you know. It seems that our sales are brisk, which is good. Um, we can certainly be reached by online at gatrees.org or certainly any of our local offices. Another comment, uh, SFI Inc. has recently announced its support of PLT. We think that's a good fit. Um, here in Georgia, we're still very excited to be a part of PLT and work with the association. I believe we'll even have a PLT event while we're here for this conference for the kids in the evening. I wanna close and simply thank Dale and all of the search committee members for the efforts that they're putting into uh, the search committee for our new director. It's critically important and I would ask each of you to consider when the announcements come out and the invitations will come out um, to invest a little time. Please um, challenge the agency, ask the questions. You know, how are we being the best state agency in the country? You know, in some measures we are, but in some measures we would love to have the input because that's, that's what we want. So again, thank you all so much and I'll turn it over. Thank you. Thank you, Buford. You guys do a great job. As a private lender, I really appreciate that. Go ahead. Please stand, search committee. Thank you, Dale. All right, I'm going to invite Andres to come up and give his president's report. <laughs> 